Hello and welcome to this field tutorial. I'm Moreno from Our Mountains and today we're going to have a look at how to get started with field. To do so, we're going to create a very, very simple game from scratch and we're going to see how we can add some juice to it. So right now I just finished importing field uh, into a new project. I was actually just recording the how to install tutorial and what I've done is uh, in my assets folder here, I've created a game folder where I'm going to put everything that is game related, and uh, also a third party folder in which I put field. Uh, you'll notice that field doesn't have to be at the root of your project or at a specific location. It's up to you to put it wherever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And uh, in that third party folder, you would put maybe you know other assets you, you're using. Um, it's up to you. That's just a suggestion. You organize your project however, however you want. So. To create our own mini game, uh, the first thing we will want to do is create a new scene, and we're going to call it I don't know my game, right? Um, and we're going to open it. So we don't have much in that scene, and we're going to start by creating a new cube. So uh, for the object cube, and we're going to scale it a bit to four 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 like this, and on its mesh renderer here. We're gonna uh, pick a new material. I suggest going with uh, blue dots. This one. Uh, it's used in one of the field demos and just looks a bit nicer than the default material. Uh, you'll notice that field contains many prototype-friendly materials that you can use in your project. Uh, that's just one of them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna position the cube at zero minus two zero. And we're going to name it ground. That's going to be uh, the ground for our level. Now, to make our scene look a bit better, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the lighting settings here. And we're going to set the skybox material to something else uh, rather than Unity's default. And we're going to go with the tactical, still tactical skybox. There we go. So that already looks. A bit nicer. Likewise, you'll find a bunch of skyboxes used in the demos uh, that can get you started if you're prototyping something. Um, next, we are going to create a Cinemachine virtual camera. Uh, going by uh, that Cinemachine menu, create virtual, virtual camera. And we're going to position the camera at 2.5, 2.5. And that will give us, um, oh yeah, the rotation. So 20 minus 30. And now we have a nice angle in our game view. It's all like that. We now have a decent looking scene. So we're going to add a character to it. So to do so, we're going to create uh, yet another cube. And we're going to position it at 0 0.5 0 and we're going to change its material as well to uh dark gray squares and we're going to name it hero now uh we're going to add a rigid body component to our hero and we're going to freeze its rotation on all axis so just going to check these three checkboxes here. And to make things easier to handle, we're going to separate our logic from our visuals. So uh, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our hero, uh, control D, and we're going to name that model. We're going to drag and drop the model onto or into the hero to make it a child of hero. And on the hero node, we're going to remove uh, the mesh renderer and the mesh filter. We're going to keep the collider and the rigid body. And on the model, we're going to remove uh, the collider and the rigid body. There are other ways to do that. Uh, that's just one way. So yeah, you, you should have this result, a nice cube on a nice ground. Of course, at this point, if we were to press play, nothing would happen. We haven't added any behavior to our game, so that's completely normal. We're going to fix that. 
uh, we're going to create a folder called script just to uh, keep all things tidy. And we're going to create a new script. We're going to call it getting started for your hero. And we're going to open that in our editor. So we could uh, take some time and write that entire script. Um, but you know it's not it's not really what this tutorial is about. So uh, instead, what we're going to do is, if you go to uh, field docsmomentumcom getting started, you'll find this, and you can just directly copy this entire thing, paste it in your class, save and uh, go back to Unity. And we're going to go over what, what that script does. But basically, now if I press space, nothing happens. Nothing happens because I haven't added that script to my hero. And of course, uh, that's to be expected. So now if I start again and press play and then space, I have a very, very um, impressive game where a character can jump. So even if we didn't type everything, we're going to just have a quick look at what that script does. So uh, you can see that here we are declaring a key we're going to look for. Uh, by default, it's space. We have a jump force that we can modify in our inspector. Uh, we have two feedbacks. We'll get back to that. On awake, we grab our rigid body. We set the gravity to minus 30. And on update, we look for input. So if we get uh, the space key being pressed and uh, we're not already jumping, then we're going to trigger a jump. And if we are jumping and we were going down and we've just uh, reached the ground, we consider we're not jumping anymore. So we turn our jumping flag to false. And we also store our velocity to enable that computation to work. And here we have our jump method, extremely simple, just adding force to our rigid body that pushes the rigid body in the air. So as you can see, very, very basic character control. So technically our game works. We have a jump, but that's not a very exciting one, right? So we're going to fix that. And to do that, we're going to use one of the core components of feel, MM feedbacks. MM feedbacks is a complex system and one of the most useful tools in Fuel. It's complex in its uh, inner workings, but it's designed to be fairly easy to use. And it's likely the part of Fuel you're going to end up using uh, very often. So uh, to start, we're going to create two new empty children objects inside our hero. So uh, we select hero and just create two objects. We're going to call the first one jump feedback. We're going to call the second one landing feedback. We're going to select them both. And via the add component button, we're going to type MM feedbacks and we're going to select MM feedback. Here we go. We're going to select the jump feedback first and we're going to add the first feedback to it. So what we want is we want our hero mod model to rotate as it jumps. And so in the MM Feedbacks Inspector, we're going to go with um, Add New Feedback. And in its dropdown, we're going to go with Transform Rotation. We can then unfold it. And you'll find that every feedback has an inspector like that. And of course, it exposes a number of settings that you can tweak to make that feedback do exactly what you're after. So in its inspector right here, we're going to drag the model into our rotation target. That's the thing we want to rotate. Uh, we're going to set the animation, uh, animate rotation duration to 0.5. It's in seconds, so half a second. And the remap curve one value to 90. So what these things do, remap curve zero and remap curve one. So by the way, we have these nice uh, two tips every time you over over a field, if you don't know what it does, you're not sure, you can always double check. So the idea is you'll find plenty of curves uh, throughout all the feedbacks and generally all the classes in field. Um, what 
v zoo is, for example, here we are animating uh, the x rotation over that curve. So that means that um, we start at a certain value, zero, on the curve, which is remapped to that value. In this case, it's zero. Um, and the one is going to re be remapped to that other value. So what that means is here we have our zero, here we have our one, which means 90 degrees in this case. And over 0 0.5 seconds, we're going to move from 0 to 90 degrees, back to 45, back to 0. And that's how you know, these curves are going to be evaluated. Um, we're going to uncheck, by the way, uh, the X and Y animation. Uh, we just want to animate on the X axis. And we're going to go with any of the curves here that go from 0 to 1. So for example, this one has some ease in and ease out. Uh, this one would be faster attack. Let's go with that, for example. And now um, we're going to press play in Unity. And with our feedback selected, we're going to press play here. And you can see that we have our cube that is rotating now, rotating by 90 degrees doing like a small turn every time on the X axis. So here I'm testing by pressing play on the feedback itself. I could press play on the MM feedbacks right here. I'm going to see um, very soon what it does. So um, that's all well and good, but it would be nice if that feedback could play when we actually jump instead of uh, turning on the ground like that and clipping with the ground. And that's actually fairly easy to do. So if we go back to the class we had earlier, you'll notice that um, we declared two MM feedbacks. So that's basically slots that will appear in our inspector here. You can see that we have these two slots. Right now they are empty. And we're not doing anything with them. You can see that my ID raised them out. So what we want to do is we're going to type, actually going to type them. So when we jump, when we start jumping, we're going to go and say jump feedback. If it's not new, play feedbacks. Just like that. And on the landing detection right here, we're going to go and say landing feedback, play feedbacks. So it's as easy as that. As long as you've got the correct bindings, uh, these are going to play in sync. So um, now what's left to do is um, you select your hero, you drag your jump feedback into the jump feedback slot, you drag the landing feedback into the landing feedback slot. Now, if you press play again, press space, we've got our cube. Both jumping using our character controller, mini character controller code, and it's also playing the feedback, which is rotating the cube. All right, we've got a good base, uh, we've got our cube jumping, and we've got a first feedback, but that's only where the fun begins. Uh, we can now start adding more feedback, uh, more feedbacks to our jump feedback. So, um, one of the first things we can do is add a sound feedback. Um, as you can see, here we have our rotation one, we have our sound one, and they all have their own unique inspectors. Uh, you can, of course, reorder them. You can rename them, by the way, uh, like, uh, let's say, 90 degrees turn. As you can see, it also changes here. Could be useful if you have more than one sound, if you have, you know, just, just want uh, to organize things better. It doesn't impact anything in code really um and so here yeah the sound effect we're going to change that for some hat maybe this one and you can see we have this convenient test play sound button let's us test the sound even in editor um what's nice with it is that if we start uh, tweaking these settings for example uh, min and max volume 
you can see that every time I play, it's a slightly different volume. It's randomizing the volume between 0.5 and 1. Uh, likewise, I could go with something like this. Getting a very uh, different pitch every time. There are plenty of ways, by the way, to uh, play sound. You can see that uh, you can apply filters. Uh, there's the entire MM Sound Manager system. That's going to be the subject of different tutorial. Uh, let's just go with that sound for now. And uh, we're going to select our landing feedback and we're going to do the same. We're going to add sound to it. Uh, this time we're going to go with, I don't know, uh, some, some bass sound. Um, maybe this one. It's a weird sound for a landing, but I'm going to go with it. And also, I'm uh, going to add a Cine Machine Impulse uh, feedback that's going to make the camera shake when we hit the ground. So I'm uh, going to go with Camera Cine Machine Impulse. We're going to do a few changes here. Uh, the first one is we want to have a raw signal. So I'm clicking on the tiny cog here, presets, 60 shake. And we're going to go with, let's say, 555 five, five as our velocity. Um, and for this to work, uh, we need to select our virtual camera here and just add an extension. So you click on that select drop down next to add extension and you go with impulse listener. And yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty much it's all you need. Now, if you press play and then you press space to jump and trigger or controller class, it jumps and it shakes. Can't hear the sound still, so I may have to redo the whole thing again. Uh, why would that be? All right, okay. Uh, we are in event play method and we want to go with cached. We don't have like uh, events works if you have something catching that event. Uh, we don't have that, that scene. So yeah, let's do it again. It works. Uh, of course, you may want to adjust like, for example, uh, the you could adjust the sound. I'm not sure that piano note is very appropriate, but uh, maybe the velocity is too high on that impulse. That's better. Now, uh, we could improve the look of that scene. And if we do so, we can then build upon that and have feedbacks that target what we're going to do to, to improve uh, the look of things. So in a scene view, we can create a new point light. And we're going to position it at 1.2, 0.75, and minus 1. There we go. Uh, we're going to create a new game object, an empty one, and call it post processing volume. And we're going to add Guess what? A post-process volume to it. Uh, we're going to check is global, and we're going to press the new button here. That creates a new profile for us to use. We can just add overrides. Um, we're going to get back to it in a second. Now we're going to select our main camera, and on our main camera, we're going to add a post-process layer. There we go. So with the post-process layer open, we're going to say we're going to render to everything, just ignore that thing, and we're going to select some anti-aliasing like this. Back on our post-processing volume, we can add uh, maybe a vignette first and increase its intensity so we can see that you know, it's active. And if we go on our game view, it's also active. So everything's fine. I'm just going to make it like so, I guess. Um, then we're going to add some ambient occlusion, which right now is doing nothing. Yeah. Want to make it light. 
and maybe change the color for something a bit more uh, bluish, like so. This is purely cosmetic, so uh, really it's uh, just to make it look a bit better at runtime. Now, um, now we're gonna start to add stuff that really is gonna improve the, the feel of our jump. So uh, we're gonna go with a lens distortion. And what lens distortion does is, well, it distorts the lens, right? So it gives this sort of fisheye effect. We're gonna leave it at zero, and we're gonna use a feedback later on to modify it. Uh, likewise, we're gonna use a chromatic aberration one. Not usually something you would want to have constantly on. It creates these sort of aberrations. Um, we're going to leave it at zero, but we're going to use it uh, and, and modify it via feedback. To do so, we need a component on our volume. We need a component to uh, listen to events triggered by feedbacks. And that component is going to then, in turn, when it gets the, the, the order, it's going to modify the values on our post process. So uh, these are called shakers, uh, and I shouldn't have typed it like that. But let's go with lens. If you start typing, usually the name of your post-processing, you'll find quickly the shaker that goes with it. In this case, we want an MM lens distortion shaker. And we just leave it there, and we're going to do the same for the chromatic aberration shaker. And now we have our, our, our shakers. So the shakers, they get the event, they get the order to shake something, and they shake it. And on our uh, landing feedback, we're going to go and add two new feedbacks. We're going to add uh, a post-processing chromatic aberration, and we're going to add a post-process lens distortion. So on the chromatic aberration one, we're going to say that, um, yeah, maybe this is fine. Let's, let's just uh, test it. Not sure of the values, actually. So this works, you know, like uh, when I press play here, only on that feedback, uh, it, it does what I want, a bit of a boost on the chromatic aberration. Um, what about the lens distortion one? It's a bit, it's a bit light. Um, so here we have, by default, the remap intensity is the, the one value of the curve here. Uh, this height and theoretically also this one, I guess, is minus one uh, will be remapped to minus 20. We want to go a bit heavier. We're going to go with 50. And as you can see, yeah, now, now it's more impressive. Um, when exiting, remember to apply your changes. Uh, you can do so by copying values. You can many ways, but like here, I just, I just know I went with uh, 50 at playtime. I input that. And now, if we press play, we're going to have these, all of these, so the sound, the impulse, the chromatic aberration, and the lens distortion playing every time our cube lands. Let's try it by pressing play. So in editor, sometimes you'll get this weird uh, blue shader computing thing, and it only happens once. If you do it again, now it's nice. That's just uh, the editor calculating the, the shader of the post process. It's actually quite satisfying. That's nice. So there will be more tutorials going in depth over uh, the different feedbacks you can do, uh, you, can, you can use and uh, the options because we've got all these timing options. We've got uh, also, you know, special feedbacks like poses, We've got loops, uh, tons of stuff you can do. But feel is not just MM feedbacks. It's also made of a uh, significant amount of tools. Uh, they are all located inside MM tools here. Uh, you'll find dedicated ones for C Machine, Text Mesh Pro, and stuff, but like there is a lot to unpack. Um, all of these are not necessarily correctly documented yet. Uh, that's a work in progress, but it's coming. And you'll find very varied stuff from like math helpers to uh, gyroscope things that uh, component that will expose the values of your gyro. Um, camera helpers, controls, really a ton of stuff. 
documentation for that, tutorials for that is definitely coming. Feel free to explore in the meantime. So um, we're going to use some of these tools now to add uh, more stuff. So let's start by creating a sphere. And uh, we're going to set its material to um, tiles, when the tiles 12. And it looks like so. And we're going to position it at 2.5. Zero, and we're going to change its scale it to 0.5. So we should have a scene that looks like this. Now we're going to add an mm auto rotate script to it. We can remove its collider, we don't actually need it. And we're going to set its uh, rotation speed to 0, 0.50. Zero. If we were to press play, as you can probably guess, this makes the uh, sphere rotate on itself. And we're going to uh, make it orbit, actually, the, the cube. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drag our hero here. And automatically, uh, you get this nice orbit gizmo. I uh, find it very satisfying as far as gizmos go, and uh, that's going to show you exactly, you know, the, uh, uh, the orbit. And you can see that you, you could change the uh, axis, uh, rotation axis of the orbit, get all sorts of weird um, orbits. You could change the center, it still be applied to the hero plus that offset. Uh, you can change the rotation speed. I don't know, let's go with uh, a thousand. Uh, you could change the radius of the orbit. Let's stick to three, I guess. And um, yeah, we can just press play. And we've got we've got the yeah, it's orbiting, but it's it's looking actually quite bad. Uh, maybe because fixed update. Yeah, you want to go with fixed update in that context. And rotation space doesn't really matter. Yeah. So yeah, fixed update it is. Looking good. All right. Um, we're gonna add some tiny cubes now, and so I'm gonna go with cube. New cube. I'm uh, gonna position it at minus. 0 0.75, 0 0.1, and minus 1.25. As you can see, I've done that before. 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Here we go. We have a tiny cube sitting nicely next to the other big one. Um, we're going to add, going to remove its collider as well. We're not using that. And we're going to add one of my favorite components, MM Follow Target. As you can see, this one has a, quite a few options and it's it's a powerful tool um we're going to drag the hero transform into it and we're going to make a few uh changes we're going to uncheck follow position x we're going to uncheck follow position z we just wanted to follow the y position and we're going to uncheck follow scale as well and we're going to check add initial distance y to the y offset like this and now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that cube and put some of them you know like around the big one if we press play now and we jump you can see that the tiny cubes are following the big one. And if we were to select the big one and we were to, I don't know, can I do that? That's a bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. Um, how can I do it? Again? Let's try again. Uh, 
that's not what I want. Okay, yes. Um, so I, I just made it uh, kinematic. That means that I can I can move it without having the, to worry about the, the gravity bringing it down. And you can see that the tiny cubes, they follow, right? And the cool thing is with mm follow target here, uh, you can decide on a lot of interpolation uh, options. So uh, for example, I could make it spring and I could say that now if I move my hero, you can see that the tiny guys, the tiny cubes, they are following, but like on a spring. And um, that opponent, and then for the target, has plenty of options. Uh, you could just have them uh, regularly lurping. It's, it's a good lurp. It's not Unity's default lurp, but uh, tons of options here as well to play with. And yeah, uh, what else? We can add an FPS counter. That's always nice. So we're going to create a new uh, UI canvas here. And from there, we're going to go and create a new text object, UI text. We're going to uh, turn ourselves in 2D, make it in, uh, let's, let's put it in, in the corner somewhere. You could make it nicer if you want. I'm just going to make it big enough that you can see uh, something like this and something like that. Go with maybe mm, Lato Heavy. Yay. Let's see. All right. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be something like that. And then we can just add an MMFPS counter to it. Use that interval. And we can also um, use an MMFPS unlock that unlocks, you know, Unity's default FPS limit. Let's set it to 300. And now you can see that as we play, we get an actual FPS counter in the corner. So uh, we've seen how to declare feedbacks and bind them in the inspector um, and trigger them via code. Um, maybe you prefer working with Unity events. And with Field, that's also possible. So we're going to make a few changes to our class, and we're going to simulate um, maybe being in a framework that exposes Unity events. Maybe you know, you're using a character controller that works that way. Maybe you're using Bolt or any visual scripting tool. And you would find something uh, that would look a bit like this. So uh, you would have unity events that you can hook yourself to. Uh, of course, you wouldn't probably be typing these, but that's the uh, uh, w without you know installing Bolt and everything. That's the shortest way to show you how it works. So um, I just declared two unity events, and I'm gonna of course remove the parts uh, where I was using bound feedbacks. And instead, I'm going to be like, uh, if on jump is not more, then on jump invoke, right? And that's actually not the right one. That's, that could be done. So on landing, invoke, on jump, in the jump method. So if I go back to Unity now, and I select my hero, you can see that, uh, and that's what I wanted to show you, I have these events. I could have done a header. I did. So um, this is something, yeah, if you're using visual scripting, that's something you'll be familiar with. And in these, I can just uh, drag my jump feedback, drag my landing feedback. And all I have to do is select MM feedbacks, play feedbacks, MM feedbacks, Play feedbacks. I press play. Still works. Um, so that's the other way of triggering uh, MM feedbacks. So that's it for this getting started 
tutorial. Uh, now you know how to create new feedbacks, you know how to call them from code or via events. And you've also started having fun with all the extras contained in Phil. You can now start adding more feedbacks to that scene. If you want to practice, you can start adding them to your own game. And of course, you can start exploring you know, the rest of the contents, the demos, the documentation. Um, I hope you learned something new today. I hope you're enjoying Phil, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.